Hello, everybody. Welcome to the world's greatest Bronze Age comic book podcast, Flea Market Fantasy. I'm your co-host, Mike Gell, and as always, I'm joined by... Michael Dell of the LCS Hockey Radio Show. Woo! And in a first, somehow, Shocktober has spilled into November. Why don't you tell everybody what's going on here? Yeah, I was pretty uh, sour about how Shocktober <laughs> went, at least on your end. <laughs> I don't think you lived up to the expectations. What? So as I am a man of the people, I have decided to extend Shocktober into November. Because there are very few Thanksgiving... Uh, oh, well, let's see, I was going to make a Thanksgiving reference, but I forgot you're Canadian. Hey, so we have Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, in October. But it's like but it's like way earlier, though, right? Yes, October, mid-October. Yeah, so ooh, you could combine Shocktober and uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving. That's true, that's true. <laughs> but since there are no Thanksgiving comics that I'm aware of, we'll go with uh, Shocktober one more week, just to make up for your pitiful choices. Oh, ooh, shots fired. So, here we go. But Mike, yeah, this is also another first because I am picking uh, the same comic book for the second time. That's true. That's true. You're cheating. You're bending the rules. Yeah. A little bit. So we're going to go back to uh, Tomb of Dracula. Yes. Issue 44 from 1976, I believe. Yep. I think so. So, uh, And this is, of course, Marv Wolfman and Gene Colan. Yep. Now, and Tom talk, Palmer, uh, Tom Palmer, don't forget him, yeah, right? Yeah, the anchor, Tom Palmer. Uh, now, of course, we did uh, Team of Dracula. I think we did issue 12 before. In fact, I know we did because I'm looking at it right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm looking at my notes. Oh, cool. You got notes, well. too. Yeah, because uh, I was about to look up stuff about Marv Wolfman again because I wanted to see how many issues he wrote. I was like, wait, I think I still have my notes for that, and I, I found my notes. Oh, so then people have a perfectly good reason to tune out this time. <laughs> so I didn't have to do the research. <laughs> but uh, Tim of Dracula from 1972 to 1978, or 79, I'm sorry. Uh, my eyes are bad. And it ran for 70 issues. And now why did it, it come back in 1972, Michael? Do you, do you because know? Because I believe it's because they relaxed the comics code. Right? Yeah, that's correct. Which allowed them to publish, you know, vampires, zombies, va- uh, wolf peep, wolf men, stuff like that. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason, those are all against the comics code. And right. Until uh, 71. All right, so yeah, Tomb of Dracula. And the, the first six issues were written by Jerry Conway, Archie Goodwin, and Gardner Fox. Huh. And then, Mar- not, not all together, you know, respectively. Oh. They each wrote some issues. <laughs> and then, uh, Marv Wolfman took over at issue seven and then he wrote the rest of the series cool and he's kind of you know what's one of his most famous you know series yeah and uh for those of you out there who might be scoffing at tomb of dracula it's it's widely considered one of marvel's best series of the 1970s definitely yeah yeah and i seem to recall we both enjoyed issue 12 as well yes yes definitely all right but uh the artist here is gene colin and he drew the entire run, all 70 issues. That's crazy. Wow. And I, to- and I told this story the last time, but uh, Bill Everett was slated to do the, the series. And Gene Colan petitioned Stan Lee because he, he really liked uh, Dracula and vampires and he wanted to draw it. So he like drew up like a whole bunch of uh, Dracula stuff and sent it over. And Stan Lee says, all right, you got the job. Wow. Perfect. So, yeah. And he did it the whole run. Hmm. Hey, I, I've also been uh, recently looking at some Gene Colan stuff from uh, Creepy and Eerie. Yeah, nice. Magazines. Yeah. Okay. It's like black and white, you know? Right, his, right. His stuff. art is like perfect for black and white. Yep, you know, absolutely. Yeah, Gene Colan's great. Um, so, and then uh, Tom Palmer, <clears throat> you mentioned him earlier. Great anchor. Uh, he, he inked 65 of the 70 issues. Wow. So that's why I think you can see why this series was so highly acclaimed because they had one consistent creative team that helps definitely Is it, does that ever happen these days where people are these days for, phew, you're uh, lucky if you get five issues in, in a row yeah. right that's what I'm, it seems to be that way right. yeah. but here we but, got three people together for uh, 65 issues uh, that's pretty good you know what I did I tell you what my I predict to be the next wave of Marvel after the current one ends like you know the Marvel Cinematic Universe I think they I think they're gonna do horror I think they're going to do Tomb of Dracula. What's the wolf one? Werewolf by uh, Night. Yeah, Werewolf, Werewolf by, by Night. There you go. And what's the Frankenstein one? Uh, they have Eye Zombie. Well, that's DC. No, no, no. It's Marvel. Huh? 
I zombie. Oh wait, well z zombie, just the zombie. Yeah, yeah, I zombie yeah, is yeah. vertigo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but just the zombie. Yeah, know. yeah. Well, it's not the. I think it's just called. Zombie. I think it's just zombie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I confused them. But uh, I don't. Did they have a Frankenstein one? Uh, I mean, yeah, because there's a Frankenstein in the Marvel Universe handbook, so hmm. there should be one somewhere. Interesting. I don't ever <laughs> recall stumbling across a uh, Frankenstein. Really? Series. Okay, let me dig it up while you talk. Yeah, there probably is one. Hey, Michael, you know what else they could do? They could do the Scarecrow. Yeah. <laughs> he lives in a painting. <laughs> oh, by the way. <laughs> Marvel did have one, and the series was called, get this, The Monster of Frankenstein. Oh. Yep. All right. There you go. That's for next year's Shocktober, right? Yeah. Uh, I guess this was in the 70s as well? Yep. Same time. Yep. Who was the artist? Uh, I'm going to guess Buscema. You're going to guess Buscema? Let's John see. Buscema. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, oh. It's gonna take me too long to find out, All but right. when I when yeah. I do find out, I'll let you know. What about the listeners? You're gonna let the listeners? Oh, the listeners! I can't let them down. Hold on a sec. I found it. Just a minute. <laughs> it's oh, check this out. Gary Friedrich and Mike Plug. Remember oh, them Mike from Plug. Go yeah, Ghost Mike, Rider, right? Oh uh, yeah, but Mike Plug also did some uh, Werewolf by Night. Oh, there you go. I yeah. think he drew the cover of the issue we reviewed, actually. I think so, yeah. So there and you go. If I remember correctly, that issue was uh, the wolf guy <laughs> versus Dracula. So this is technically our third issue with Dracula. Wow, look at that, eh? Ah, huh. How about that? So uh, there you go. That's uh, all the background I guess we need for King of Dracula. Okay. Anything else you'd like to mention? Uh, No, only that, you know, pardon me, I kind of have mixed feelings about Merv Wolfman, but... So far, I do like me some Dracula, some Tomb of Dracula. Hey, hey, I don't know if you know this, Michael, but after reading this, it turns out that that Dracula fella, he's a vampire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard. <laughs> he, he lives on human blood. Yep. I thought he was just an eccentric old guy with weird teeth. Really? Well, he's a vampire. Yeah. How about that? Who knew? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, apparently. So, all right, let's take a look at the cover. Uh, Tale of Dracula 44. Okay. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it is a, quite the cover. So we got Dracula kind of in the foreground. This is kind of odd, though, because... Yeah, the perspective is way Yeah, he, he's getting shot by <laughs> Doctor Strange, who's behind him, yes. but the laser or bolt or whatever is going into him. So kind of looks like Doctor Strange is just a really small guy in front of Dracula. Yeah, the, it's totally fucked. Yeah, but he is behind him because he's behind his cape, so he's definitely behind him. Yeah, like the way the body, because Dracula's in the foreground and he's very large, and uh, like uh, Doctor Strange is coming up from the bottom left on a horse, and he's shooting a well. What did he call his little magic bolts? Eldrick? Or, or I can't or, remember. Yeah, I can't something remember. something like that. But he should be like the way the the layout. He should be shooting Dracula in the back, right? The way they're positioned. But for somehow, <laughs> it's hitting him square in the chest. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's impossible. So it looks really weird. But it's still. Uh, quite the striking cover because they have like the background might go it's all rainbowy and, uh... yes so yeah there's kind of like a, an explosion of lines behind dracula yeah it's all rainbow colors and, and uh, uh go ahead read the text there's some good uh, little text bubbles here well we got first the logo the awesome logo the two of dracula lord of vampires comicdom's number one fear magazine yeah but then yeah it's not awesome <laughs> well talk about the, the title though because they uh the Tomb of Dracula, like, the Dracula is written in red, and it looks like the letters are kind of bleeding. Right. And then they're and, shattered. But in behind them, there's, like, a, a big yellow bat. Right, right. Kind of like Batman, but not really. Yeah, like a shot at Batman. Right. Yeah. And then there's a corner box with a picture of Dracula that's great. And then we got this, um, what is that text called when it explodes? I can't remember. Exploding text. That's something different. It begins with an S, but I can't remember what. Right. But anyway, it says, because you demanded it, Dracula's <laughs> Dracula battles Doctor Strange and one will die. Then at the right. bottom it says, also, Blade meets the most unexpected guest star of all. 
Yeah. Quasar? Is it Quasar? No, it's not Quasar. Damn. It's someone equally as lame. Oh, as <laughs> whoa, no. rough. Okay. Like, uh, don't spoil it for the kids. We'll reveal the big uh, thing later. But had you ever heard of this fella? Who shows no, and no, I didn't know who this person. Yeah, was. I never heard of him either. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, no, what, I wanted to say something else about this cover though, um, but I can't remember what it was. So I would just like to point out that I love the way Gene Colan draws feet and shoes. Like, uh, he just has a knack for drawing shoes. I'm a big fan. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, I love it. And uh, I, I just love Gene Colan in general. Oh, I'm yeah, me too. Like, and this this genre is exactly up his alley. Yep. And uh, I thought there's... You know, I never really uh, realized how similar Doctor Strange and Dracula look until this issue particularly when they're fighting each other well it kind of made me realize yes <laughs> i don't know if this is a miscolorization but they make dracula to have the exact same color scheme as dr strange <laughs> yes right they could have uh, done a little better with that we'll get into right that yeah too. yeah but, uh, all right look at the, let's look at the big old splash page sure this is great oh, oh hey how about read the uh stan lee presents thing sure 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 500 years ago he was killed but did but he did not die Today, Quincy Harker, Frank Drake, Rachel Van Helsing, and Blade the Vampire Slayer stalk him as this unliving lord of vampires spreads his reign of terror across a 20th century world. Stan Lee yeah. presents oh. Tomb of Dracula. Sorry, I got in the way. Pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, just to remind everybody, this is the rare comic uh -oh. book where the villain is the center of the book. You know, like... Yes. He's not your hero, but uh, you have this group of uh, heroes trying to take down a big villain, which is odd. Can you think of another instance in that in uh, of comic books? Well, technically, I know that the Joker had his own series in the 70s, and I think Doctor wow. Doom. Yeah, th there was a series also by Marvel called Supervillain Team Up, which we've yes. never done in Flea Market Fantasy. I'm, it's on my list. Yeah, really? In fact, be my next pick because because uh, I had an issue of it when I was a kid, and I'd like to read that issue again. So yeah. We'll... Hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. So you want to jump in? Sure. So we got this awesome shot of Doctor Strange. Like we could gush about every panel, but Doctor Strange is like gesturing around this crystal ball, right? Yeah. And there's all this lovely. What do you call this prose? Yeah. <laughs> Would you like <laughs> narrative would, prose? Narrative, right? yeah. Would you like me to read a sample so the so the listeners know what kind of prose this is? Yeah, it's it's well written. Yeah, I, I like I it. I think uh, Wolfman really did a good job because it it works perfect for a Dracula book. Right. You know? Yeah. So yeah, so he stares intently at the glowing orb, studying the gray mist shapes which swirl vaguely before him. He knows and he is aware of what he sees, and he is not at all pleased. I mean, I can read the whole book, but I won't. But if there's any particular passages that stick, you know, stand out, let me know. Yeah. But it's great. It's good stuff. So yeah, he's basically yeah, like, like I don't know if you want all that writing if uh, you know for Spider Man. Right, or, but for uh, this, it fits you know, the mo the yeah. tone, the tone. Yeah, yeah it strikes the the mood you want. Right, yeah. right, right. So basically, Doctor Strange is upset because his faithful companion or butler or whatever he is, Wong, was recently killed. He was killed in the last issue, right? Uh, yeah, I like how this is a big splash page of uh, just uh, Stephen Strange looking into this crystal ball. And it's really well drawn and everything, but the only word he says is Wong. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wong. Uh, and then, you know, so yeah, he's trying to, um, he's like, doesn't accept the fact that he's dead. He's like, Wong vanished, but somewhere you, he, you must still exist, my faithful servant. So he's trying to um, find out what happened to him, and then, and then Wong appears in the crystal ball. And then he's like, demons of Danak, no, Wong appears dead, but how, who? So then Wong, his body comes out of the crystal ball and, you know, to its full size. And he's like, rise from the eye of Agamotto, rise before the sorcerer supreme. And now all of a sudden Wong is floating in the air. And yeah, he's like, he's, and now he, he figures out how Wong died because he sees two holes on uh, Wong's neck. So now he knows that he was bit by a vampire, right? Yep. And he's like, the murderer stands revealed. And then on the next page, he explains to himself, in Transylvania, they speak of the undead, the damned who drink the lifeblood of their vict victims. You, vampire, you are Wong's murderer. And you shall pay dearly for your deed. So swears Doctor Strange. So he's going to get revenge, right? 
Yep. So he, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he, 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 what? I like the eye of, of, of Agamotto, like, uh, the way Colin draws it, it's like a human eye. Right. Like, Very like, cool. It's usually like a stylized eye, right? Right. Like, yeah. Like, Abstract like kind of. Yeah. Or like a gem or something. But here it's like a human eye. It's I love cool. it. Yeah, like, I'd love to see this in a movie, but, like, practical effects. That'd be so cool with an actual eyeball there. That'd be great. <laughs> so, basically, he's, like, he gets the Eye of Agamotto to hold poor Wong in its timeless power, right? So that he can go investigate and find out what's happened, right? Yes. So then he, f this is kind of cool, he flies into Wong's brain, like, into his soul. Yeah, like, his astral form goes right. into... Yes, yeah. yes. So yes, his astral form flies into Wong's like memories, and he goes into. I guess this is kind of the astral dimension, or is it his memories? Yeah, yeah they show of... him entering his brain. So yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing it's in his memories. I don't know. Yeah, so it's he fun. he sees what Wong sees. Like he starts seeing this scene through Wong's eyes. Right, and it's and... kind of funny because he's like, "I'm inside Wong's mind, reliving his last me his last me last memories." And then we and then we see a POV shot of a hand and then dr strange is like a hand before me it's wong's curse me for a novice i said i see through his eyes it's kind of funny right yeah anyway and then he hears a scream and then he looks over and he sees dracula with a woman in his arms right about to like bite her yeah he's gonna and feast the, right he's gonna yep it's yeah he's, he's about to chow down then he turns around and he sees again the pov he sees wong so we can only yeah so then we see dracula come towards you know wong wong's pov into his face so we can only imagine what happens next but obviously he bites him right yeah so dr strange is like no more is wong suffering is too excruciating to bear so then he, he comes back to like reality and he's like well i know what i've got to do now i've got to avenge wong right so then he takes off and he's going to go avenge him and then we cut over to some comic relief here uh to this other character what's this guy's name yeah i have no idea who these people were i, I guess if we read more we'd know who these people were. yeah but, uh, he must be a supporting character yeah yeah he, he goes to midnight publishing um it, it seems like they uh they only specialize in the occult and this guy he's like a nerdy little uh horror writer right i guess he, he contributes articles to this uh magazine or whatever and uh there's a lady in there i don't know if she is she the publisher or Aurora uh, I think so, yep. yep. And she's on the phone and ignoring him, and he's trying to like uh, get her attention. And uh, but it, I think it's pretty funny, though, at the end. Um, uh, what is it right? happening again? I don't remember. <laughs> well, he's trying to... Uh, oh, trying to set up a date with her. Ask her out on a date. Right, right, right. And, and, and she says in... Uh, wait, what, she has to... Oh, his name's Harold something. We should have looked that up. I don't know, Harold... Um, oh, says, oh, uh, oh, it's Harold H. Harold, right? I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Because yeah. right. I remember him again from Marvel Universe. Well, look at you. When are we going to pick a Marvel Universe issue, Michael? Like hey, any day of the week. Any yeah. day of the week. Sure. We'll just go through like the letter H. There you go. Three yeah, I'll eight. put... And then, yeah, I'm sure Harold will be in that issue. I'll put that on my list here. Marvel Universe. There you go. Uh, but, but she says, Harold, uh, you're a really nice, sweet person. And he says, yeah. And uh, poor little old me should be flattered that a big time writer like you thinks I'm ravishingly cute. But frankly, Harold, I think you're a nerd. What? <laughs> <laughs> and then she just picks up the phone and starts talking to somebody. <laughs> if I had a dime for every time I heard that, eh? <laughs> oh, no. And uh, so, yeah, now we come back to uh, Dracula, Mike, and he's flying uh, home, I guess, right? Or he's going somewhere. Yeah, yeah. See, now this is where I got a touch confused because. Um, he okay so dracula's flying he turns into a human but then there's another guy who see because okay so he turns into a human but then this other guy turns into a bat so i thought for a second that was dracula but it's not it's the well, mysterious guest star yeah eventually yeah that guy turns into a bat then, yeah. yeah so like no yeah, two, like, two panels later right yeah 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 two panels later. yeah that's what i mean like so anyway so this is another guy who is presumably a, another vampire Yes, because we see his fangs, and then we right. see him turn into the bat. Um, but I guess, see, readers of Dracula probably recognize this fellow. But, exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah, and, and i got to give not. some samples of this narration here. Hold on a sec. The bat, 
alights atop one cold spire and reforms into a man. For Dracula cannot abide his non-human shapes for long. Awesome. And then we see the other guy. Uh, and then the other guy, it says, he turns and his slick silver hair catches and holds the fragile moonlight. It's great. It's great. And then this guy turns into a, a bat and flies away. So he's obviously a vampire too. Yeah, it's another vampire who wants to get Dracula. Right. Uh. And then we cut to inside and... Uh, Dracula is doing what any Dracula would do in a Dracula story, <laughs> smashing a TV set. Well, I guess this is, uh, they explain this, and I forget because I read this a few days ago. But this is someone else's house, I guess, that he, did he kill or something, and now he's taking over that house. And he's mad because there's all kind of technology in there, and there should be technology in <laughs> right. the uh, castle house or something like that. Right, right. So he, he's all pissed. Uh, but again, that shot of him uh, using the big wooden stick to beat up the TVs, that's classic stuff there. it's great stuff yep i love yeah. it um and he's like uh he's like oh dracula is ever a soldier it must be ever ever be at the ready but not tonight i am tired and i need to sleep to awaken fresh when darkness falls again see that's like me that's why i take naps every day <laughs> and then uh we cut over to drac to sorry to blade who looks just like he does in the movies wearing green <laughs> pants and a red <laughs> leather jacket and green <laughs> goggles i love this yeah. I, I hope that the next Blade reboot. He looks like this, eh? What do you think? I hope so too. But they'll make him wear all black, of course, and stuff. And, yeah. Right, right, right. So anyway, uh, so then Blade. Yeah, all of a sudden Blade is like leaping into his apartment, going back to his house. I guess. Uh, and, I don't know if it's his. Is it his apartment? Or well, it says, uh, and tonight he's ready to kill. He crouches wearily at the door, waiting. Oh no, maybe you're right. And then across the room, he yeah. sees the doorknob turning and his prey entering. So this is his prey. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because I think Dracula killed his mom, right? So he's hunting Dracula. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, you're right, right. You're right. I think so. Yeah. Or or vampires or, or, in general, right? Yeah, but like, for he has traced the killer of his mother to this city, to this building, to this apartment. Now, is Dracula the killer of his mom, or is it just a vampire in general? Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm more familiar with the movie version, so I don't know. Yeah. But then again, in the movie, it was Dracula too. I think. But that's how he became a vampire, because uh, Dracula bit his mom when she was having the like when well, she was in birth, right? Oh, okay, I think so. Wasn't yeah. that the story? I think yeah. so. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, uh oh, what happened? Did I lose you? No, I'm still here. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so then we cut back over to Doctor Strange, and he's using the Eye of Agamotto to light light his way, right? Yeah, and then all cool. yeah, it is very cool. And then all of a sudden, flashlight. Yeah, exactly. But it's seeing like spiritual images, and so he comes across the life patterns, uh, a life pattern of Dracula, who's in the like vision or whatever. We can see he's got a victim there too, right? Yeah. So very cool, very cool. And then and, and then you can see like the ghostly image of Dracula, and Doctor Strange is like, well, and he, huh? Oh, sorry. I think that victim. That's Wong, right? Oh, is that Wong? Yeah. That is Wong. Yeah. yeah. So then he's like. And as he rises, he changes, metamorphosizes into the bat. Lead on, vampire, and I shall follow. So now he can follow the image, the ghostly image of the bat, right? And find out where he went. Yeah. Oh, look at this next page. Like, flying through, like, a snowy, like, um, <laughs> not, a, not a cemetery, but just kind of like a, whatever this is called. Like, there's a nice little bridge there with, like, stone uh, light posts or whatever. It's just very cool. I love yeah. it. And, uh, oh, again... Cold yeah, gray. I got to read this. A veil of ivory cloaks the ground, giving the parkland below <laughs> Stephen Strange a surreal, surrealistic, unnatural calm. Oh, it's great. Anyway, <laughs> so then he follows the ghostly bat and he lands on top of like a, what is this, a spire? Yeah, it's a spire, right? Yeah. Of his house. But then, he, you know, inside we see in, in, a, in a coffin, Dracula is sleeping, right? So cool. But then Dracula wakes up because he's like a human. I sense the presence of a human in this manch. Van Helsing? Drake? <laughs> that damnable blade? No, the smell is different. Almost ominous in its portent. Sure enough, it's Doctor Strange, right? Yeah, and he just blasts his way right through the ceiling. Yep. And then, uh, Doctor, or then Dracula gets up, and this is where, like you said, we kind of realize they have almost exactly the same outfit on, right? <laughs> Yes, blue. They're both dressed in blue with the red lined cape on Dracula. Yep. So yep. it looks very much like Strange's red cape. Right. Oh. So then, uh, and then Dracula's like, you know, he basically gets up and now the fight begins, right? So Doctor Strange is using his Eye of Agamotto and uh, 
Dracula, what is he doing? He's like, oh, he's getting kind of like enveloped in this like energy smoke stuff, right? Well, he's like, uh, what's... uh, Mystic Bonds. Yeah, but uh, he used to have a word for him. uh, The the, begins with a C, but I I can't remember. I don't know. Dr. Strange. Anyway, but yeah, he's tying up uh, uh, Dracula, but then Dracula turns into fog. You know, yes. And mist. And he drifts away. Yeah, that's one of his powers from the book, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So then Doctor Strange doesn't know what to do, so uh so then he shoots him with a I don't know what. Well he shoots the coffin. He just blows up. Oh the coffin. right, right. And then uh Dracula's kind of depowered a little bit, right? Well it's just like, hey, you can't go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta go get, you gotta go buy a bed at IKEA. Because I just took out your coffin. Oh right, and, so then uh, he, oh yeah, so he, so, uh, so then but like Doctor Strange just cast a spell on him, so he's like, let the images of Icon wreck the havoc in your mind that physical powers can never accomplish. So basically, Dracula goes into kind of like a a dream state of memories, right? Yeah, he can't he, he can't get at uh, Dracula physically because he turned into the mist or whatever. So he's like, I don't want to attack your mind, right? So, uh, so then Dracula flashes back to when he was in uh, Transylvania as a um, count or whatever, no prince. A prince yeah, of Transylvania, prince. Transylvania, and uh, and then of course I love this when the narration asks questions. For <laughs> is he not Vlad Dracula, Prince of Transylvania, and is he not Commander of the Army, Warrior Supreme? I love this stuff. <laughs> and so uh, yeah, we so we see him. You know, he's basically going into battle with this really. Co- this is the same horse on the cover. The horse has this weird pattern. I don't know if that's his fur. If is it like kind of like armor? But it's like twirly brown kind of pattern. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. It looks like he's tattooed. Yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then, in this vision, all of a sudden, Doctor Strange is in the vision, and Doctor Strange is on another horse. But of course, he's dressed exactly the same as Dracula, so it's a little confusing again. <laughs> well, he's just like yeah, same color scheme. Same yes. color, yeah. So then yeah. he runs towards him, and he actually he impales him with a sword. Right, uh, and with it, a lance. With a actually. lance, specifically yeah. a lance. Yes. Yeah. And it goes. And, not- and I guess this is what happened to Dracula in his real life. He got uh, someone in battle, took him out, and, but here it's Doctor Strange in the vision, and then and to Dracula in his true life, while he was wounded, a vampire bit him. Right. Right. And turned him into a vampire. Exactly. So, but he's reliving all these memories again. And right, he's, and he's horrified. Like mm-hmm. he's horrified. Mm-hmm. He's shocked, like in shocktober. <laughs> yes, yes. So then he's like, "I'll return." Dracula's like, "I'll return to life. I'll return life to your bones, but not with my herbs, fiend. No, with a far more potent medicine, one which shall last forever. The bite of the vampire." Yeah, apparently it's a lady named Le, uh, what's her name, Leanda. Leanda, the, yes. She she was the voice there talking about the herbs and whatnot. Because someone brought uh, the wounded Dracula to her to heal him, mm-hmm. and then when they left uh, him in her charge, she hated him because of like uh, I guess his family or whatever. So she uh, she bit him, made him a vampire. Right, right. So then, uh, so then Dracula is screaming. It's like, no, 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 it was a nightmare and a cursed dream, but hold the sorcerer. So now he's back to reality. Yes, and then Doctor Strange is like, yes, Dracula, the sorcerer, I am the one responsible. You must be broken, forced to listen to my orders to aid me in the resurrection of my servant. And then Dracula's like, your servant? You do this for a mere hireling? No. And so then, um, what does he do here? So then, does he uh, just give in? Oh, he's trying to hypnotize him. So yeah. then Dracula tries to hypnotize Doctor Strange, and sure yeah. enough, even though Doctor Strange is the Sorcerer Supreme, Dracula hypnotizes him, right? He's like, yeah, let my... S- stare into my eyes. Right, yeah. and they're all red and glowing. He's like, let my will become yours. Your will become mine. <laughs> <laughs> and now before, you're, before you can muster resistance, I shall have my feast. So then guess what? Dracula bites Doctor Strange, and guess what, folks? Even though it's only number 44 of, well, Dracula, Doctor Strange is dead. So, yeah, this is the last appearance of Doctor Strange. Yep, it's all He over. gone. Yep. So then uh, Dracula's like, you fought well, Strange, yet I could not die, therefore I could not lose. Farewell until we meet again. Three days hence. 
and then the narration, and in the far distance, the midnight bells toll their final deadly peal. It's twelve. It is twelve o'clock midnight. The witching hour, and the sorcerer supreme is dead. There you go. And to be continued. Be sure to buy Doctor Strange fourteen. Yes. On sale in just one week. You don't dare miss this one. So yeah, the story continues in Doctor Strange. Uh, I hate to break it to you. I don't want to ruin it for you, my guy. But Doctor Strange does not die. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Shocker. He. I, I read that. I went. Uh, I didn't read it in detail, but I you know, skimmed through it. But apparently he just uh, uses his magic to fight through the vampirism and just <laughs> expels it from his body. <laughs> so, yeah, but, interesting. But he, like, ends up, like, scorching uh, Dracula. He hits him with all his magic and, like, just incinerates him, kind of. Uh, it leaves a charred corpse behind. But then Dracula eventually rises again. Interesting. But, uh, and you know who wrote so, that story, right? Oh, I'm guessing Marv Wolfson. Steve Englehart. Oh, that's right. Yep. As soon as I said it, I'm like, oh, wait, no, it was Englehart. Yeah. Now, you know what's also interesting about this issue? Did you see who drew it? Yeah, Gene Colan drew it. <laughs> the guy's drank two books a month. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, well, he yeah. probably just He probably didn't always... Did he always do Doctor Strange, or he just did that since Dracula was involved? Uh, let me check number 13, also by Gene Colan and Tom Palmer. Oh. And let me check oh, yeah. 15... Uh, Gene Colan, Tom Palmer, yep. Because I remember when we did Doctor Strange earlier on the show, we uh, it was Frank Bruner. Right? Yes, yes, it was. Yep. Because that was great art too. Mm-hmm. So, so there it is, uh, Tomb of Dracula forty four. Oh wait, we're not done yet though, Micah. Hold on. Oh wait a minute, I didn't yeah. read this part. <laughs> what? No, I didn't read it. <laughs> I thought the issue was done. Oh, you got to. It looks like it's over. Yeah. No, 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 there's a little bit more. A little bit more. Well, you're going to have to tell me what happened because I didn't read it. <laughs> All right, so we cut back to uh, Blade because remember Blade was about to enter that apartment right. where he uh, hunted the vampire who killed his mom. And again, I don't know if it's Dracula or just some mm-hmm. other vampire, but uh, he sneaks into the apartment. But then he hears someone coming. Th- well, he doesn't sneak in. He busts through the window. Uh, but then he hears someone else in the apartment. And he's like, hey, you, you're not the killer of my mom. Uh, who are you? Who are you? And uh, then we see the uh, special guest star from this issue. He looks at the camera and he says, the name's King. Hannibal King. And yeah. the battle you've all demanded. Blade the Vampire Slayer against Hannibal King. Woo. Vampire Detective. <laughs> I love it. In the beginning of a deadly new epic on sale in Tomb of Dracula 45. We trust you, you'll be there. So yeah, the, the uh, next issue of Tomb of Dracula, it's uh, Blade and Hannibal are fighting. And then uh, Dracula comes back around after being killed by Strange. But uh, it really, yeah, it starts off focusing on Hannibal and uh, Blade. Apparently, this Hannibal fella, he made his first appearance in Tomb of Dracula 25. Right. And he, he was created by Wolfman and Colin. And yeah, he was a private detective who he was working on a case in, uh, um, well, I think, London. And he ended up getting bit by a vampire. So he... But he, so now he's a vampire detective, but he does not feast on human blood, at least on human flesh. He, okay. uh, he goes and gets blood from blood banks, and that's how he eats. Interesting. And guess who yeah. played him in the movie Blade Trinity? I have no idea. I didn't see any of those movies. Ryan Reynolds. Really? Yeah. Can you believe that? So wait a minute. Ryan Reynolds has played Deadpool and Hannibal King. And, Green, and Green Lantern, yes. Well, is that the guy, is that the guy who's played the most? Because Chris Evans has Human Torch and Captain America. Chris Evans also was in Scott Pilgrim, if you count that. No, we don't. Because that's he was also super. in The Losers, which is a Vertigo movie. So that's four. That is true. That's yep. a uh, a comic book movie. Yeah, yep. and I think there was one more, but a smaller role, but I can't remember. Yeah, well, anyway. I guess you would have to call uh, Scott Pilgrim a comic book movie, but it's yeah. like a superhero movie. True, you know, true. I don't think, but um, but neither was The Losers, so it's kind of like true, true. Anyway, this is true. Uh, but yeah, this Hannibal King fella, he is not the guy we saw earlier. It's not? No, it's a different... I think that was a different guy. Who the I heck think. was he? Okay, then I'm going to have to look up who the other guy was. Do you know who the other guy was? He just looked different, didn't he? Or maybe it is the same. I don't know. I'm going to say it was the same guy, but I will find out right now. No, because that guy looked older. Didn't he have like silver hair and stuff? Oh, could it have been Deacon Frost? I think it was Deacon Frost. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I, I kind of want to read more about Hannibal King, Vampire Detective. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Deacon Frost is a vampire, so that must have been Deacon Frost. Yeah, okay. But yeah, there I gotta go. say, yeah, I, I I could see myself reading more of this for sure. All of these characters. Yeah. yeah, it's all, it's like, like I said, we did that other one, issue 12, and that was really mm. well done as well. Right. Um, like, even if it's bad, it's still Gene Colan's art. So, yes. You know, it's still worth watching, looking at. You know? I agree. And Mark Wolfman does a really good job here, I think. Mm-hmm. So. It's kind of like Punisher. Remember, Punisher wasn't, it didn't have a great plot, but it had the tone. And this comic has the tone down, for sure. Yeah, so even if it's not perfect, it's still really good. Right. Yep. Um, and, uh, well, you know, I, I, I got to say, I know a lot of people are big fans of Bernie Wrightson, but I think. I prefer Gene Colan. Agreed. To, yeah. Yeah. Because Colan is the is the nice mix of like Jack Kirby ish action. Yep. Like in the uh, those dynamic poses with the atmospheric, moody uses of blacks and you know and shading shadow. and yeah. yeah. Fa- oh, it's great. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's great. Yep. Excellent. So there you go. I I don't know. I mean, what else can we say about this team of Dracula? It's very enjoyable. Absolutely. Yeah, like, I mean, as long as you accept the fact that it's 70s style, like, you know, which I'm fine with because I like 70s yeah, style. Yeah, it's great. 70s right. style is the best. Exactly. <laughs> Those are the best color. Yeah, no, I'm just saying for modern <sighs> readers, sometimes <sighs> they don't like this style, but, you know, you got to get over yourself, right? So. <laughs> yes. Modern comic books are terrible. <laughs> yeah, some of them, some of them, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I hear you. But, uh, yeah, this is great art. Really solid writing. Um no complaints you know yeah that's true no complaints i guess the biggest complaint you could have is that uh the color schemes of dr strange and dracula made the fight a little weird yeah that's about it you're right how could they have i guess made uh, dracula a little darker blue maybe uh, true or just black but yeah i hear you uh, yeah like teal they could have made him teal and, and again, the perspective issue on the cover, but it's still a good cover, even though it's fucked up. <laughs> right, right, right. It's not perfect, but it's good. So I don't know, my guy. It seems crazy, but I'm I'm giving it a nine out of ten. Woo! I can't mm. go that high. I'm going to give it an eight, but it definitely yeah, is good. I, I was going to go eight, but then when I was reading through this, I'm like, well, what's not to like about this? Like, what? Like, if if this isn't, uh, I mean, obviously a ten is like super great. Right. But, uh, you get a fight between Doctor Strange and Dracula exceptional art really strong writing that's not to like no complaints for me none i hear you yeah so there you go <sighs> Go dracula right how about that all right so maybe next year uh frankenstein maybe a zombie or something uh, yeah maybe yeah good. yeah absolutely maybe a little kid cold you never know right <laughs> another western <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can finally put Shocked over to bed. All right, Michael. Well, I guess uh, next week, it's back to you. So next week is going to be something radically different. We're going to have a special guest, <laughs> Bex Luther from Here Comes the Spider Cast, will be joining us. And funny enough, she's actually picked a Spider-Man comic as next week's pick because I believe it is the first comic she ever read. And it's going to be oh. Spidey Super Stories number 39. Featuring. I believe. Yeah, oh, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, go, well, you, you know what it is. Well, I did the Spider Cast with you guys yesterday. We recorded that. That's true. And, and by the way, thanks again for inviting me. Yeah, but Mike, here's what Mike L does. He says, hey, when do we have the three worst Spider Man issues <laughs> ever? Let's get Mike Dell on. Yeah. yeah. They were terrible. They but were. Uh, Bex uh, informed us then that uh, this issue she picked for Flea Market Fantasy, first appearance of a Thanos copter. Right. Possibly <laughs> only <laughs> appearance. <laughs> Explain what that is for people who aren't aware. Well, it's, I believe it's a pink helicopter. That, I, I believe it's yellow. Oh, right? yellow. But it's become so. sort of infamous as like a meme, right? And that's really all I know about it. Do you know anything else about it? Well, just uh, Thanos, you know, Mr. Yeah. Snap and kill half the universe. He was riding around in a helicopter. Yeah, it's and ridiculous. And it just said Thanos in the back. Right. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, written on the side of the helicopter. It's awesome. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you sharp by the viewers when they were watching the uh, Loki TV show. There was an episode where the Thanos copter was in the background. Really? That's hilarious. Yeah. I love yeah, it. What we, 
when they got sucked into that death world or wherever you okay. know, to. Yep. I think in the background of Thanos is copy right there. Very cool. But, uh, the, the Spidey Super Stories, well, we'll get into it next week, but this uh, did more geared towards kids, right? Definitely, yes, yes. Made yeah. for kids. So. All right, this will be Just good. Just fine. Yeah, it'll be a good time for sure, yeah. so be sure to check it out. And for those uh, who want to know, Mike, if you're listening to this right now, it should be November 16th, and uh, Mike Dell will be guesting on the November 22nd episode of Here Comes the Spider Cast. So be sure to check that out, oh. right? Wow, you do the Spider Cast like a couple weeks in advance? Yep, we've already, yep. For some reason, we used to be three weeks in advance, but then we skipped a week. What? Three yep. weeks in advance? Yeah. <laughs> Holy hell. We don't play around on Here Comes the Spider Cast. We mean business. I guess not. Yeah. All right. Anyway. So, yeah. Woo! All next right. Spider Man. So, yeah. So, be sure to join us next week and every week at Flea Market Fantasy. You can find all of, all of our episodes under Comic Book Syndicate on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify, as well as the Comic Book Syndicate Twitter feed, YouTube channel, Facebook page, and Comic Book Syndicate website. Each week, we pick a different Bronze Age comic. One week, I pick. The next week, Mike Dell picks. Sometimes, other people pick. So be sure to join us every week again. Until next Tuesday, disperse!